take things to the max. Oh. Honey, you still in bed? The Lord be with you and good morning. It's so good to see you. I'm about to start a little music for you here. The Lord be with you. Welcome. It's so good to have you here for worship this morning on this fourth Sunday in Advent. Um, as you know, we're facing COVID up here in Pennsylvania. Um, my name is Reverend Jennifer Richards, uh, also known by my community as Pastor Jenny. And I serve at St. Paul's Lutheran in New Cumberland, Pennsylvania. And we just had a massive snowstorm, which feels great. Uh, I guess if you have a snowblower like we do, <laughs> uh, but I know many of you have been out there shoveling and clearing the way uh, over the past week, and I sure hope that you're all doing very well. Um, as you also know, uh, last Sunday I let folks know that I did come down with COVID um, and, I mean, pos tested positively, but for me it was just like having a bad cold. 
So I'm so grateful that I have recovered very well. On Thursday, I took another test following up with that one, and uh, I was uh, made aware on Saturday, yesterday, I guess it was, that I am negative for COVID. So very thankful um, for a doctor who sent me in and had me tested so that I would stay away from others. Um, we did stop uh, in-person worship, not just at St. Paul's, but all across really central Pennsylvania. All of my colleagues have virtually stopped all in-person worship. This is kind of weird, isn't it? Because uh, we had to be closed for Easter and most of Lent last year. I think all of Lent. Um, and then here we are closed for um, Christmas. Not closed as a community, but closed buildings. So church is going to take on a whole different um, experience for Christmas Eve. And I want to help you get ready for that. Um, luckily, prior to everything really shutting down up here and the snowstorm adding to that, Dave Kutz has been phenomenal. And the same thing with, uh, with Karen, uh, who has, Karen Worley, who has also met with everybody from church that's willing or was willing to prepare music for Christmas Eve and prepare the readings for Christmas Eve and also for the Sunday, next Sunday, following Christmas, which is the, um, I think it's the 27th of December. Anyway, on that day, we're having a Lessons and Carols service. So folks went in ahead of time and recorded music and I'm just so excited. So you're gonna have two really beautiful liturgies pre-prepared uh, coming up. So I'm really grateful to Jim who's welcoming folks here this morning and please do let us know that you're here this morning. Um, Jim has also worked very hard with us to get materials prepared for Christmas Eve and Lessons and Carols. So this has been a team effort of everybody kind of coming in, members, etc. And um, we're, going, we're going to live broadcast on the Christmas Eve, I think that's Friday, at 7. And what's going to happen is I'll probably like greet you, welcome you, and then we're going to play the pre-recorded music, um, followed by the liturgy itself. So I am not kidding. You're going to want to come to this service. Karen Worley's husband plays a saw. And he's put music together. And I got to hear it for the first time last year. It was amazing. You're going to love this. So I really encourage you to plan on Christmas Eve to show up. Bring a candle um, so you can sing Silent Night along with us during that service and just kind of be ready uh, for that liturgy um, for Christmas Eve. Anyway, I've got lots more to, um, to get us ready for here for worship. Um, just, I hope that you've felt the love of Jesus through all of this COVID stuff that has been hard on all of us. Uh, there's been a lot of grief and a lot more people getting sick with COVID um, recently that have impacted our lives um, with making folks stay home from work, et cetera. It's been harder. So just know that you're in my prayers and that you're in our prayers as a community of faith. So if you don't mind, you've got a minute here um, to add your prayers into the comments here on Facebook Live. And Jim's going to collect those up. He'll send them to me. I'll get them on my phone. And we'll be able to add those in when the time comes for our prayers later in the service. All right. And if you have other announcements or things that we should know about, please do make sure you share them in the comments and we'll let everyone know. If you want bulletins for this Christmas Eve service or for next Sunday's Lessons and Carols, you may let us know in the comments or in an email and we'll make sure that you get this. Also, if you live locally and you would like to come into the church, you can make an appointment to come in and get a, um, a hymnal. I think I mentioned that last Sunday. So that you can sing along with the, um, with the hymns that we're playing or you can do private uh, devotionals on your own. There's stuff in the opening part of the book, the Cranberry Hymnal where you can worship and at the back of it there's the small catechism so you can learn a little bit too. Anyway with all of that said let us I think we've got most of us here present and well ready for worship I'm going to ask us to call upon God's name 
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure and whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Together, let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. We're going to take a few moments here in silence for a little reflection. Loving and forgiving God, we confess that we are held captive by sin. In spite of our best efforts, we have gone astray. We have not welcomed the stranger. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not been Christ to one another. Restore us, O God. Wake us up and turn us from our sin. Renew us each day in the light of Christ. Amen. People of God, Hear this glad news. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven. And you are free from all that holds you back and free to live in the peaceable realm of God. May you be strengthened by God and in God's love, comforted by Christ and in Christ's peace, and accompanied by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, we've got a hymn. Are you ready to sing O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, the one that I had playing in advance of the, uh, the liturgy? Yes, you're sitting at my kitchen table with me this morning. <laughs> so we'll, we'll sing a little bit. This really uh, lovely um, tune. O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel, that mourns in lonely exile here, until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel, shall come to you, O Come, O oh, wisdom from on high, embracing all things far and nigh, in strength and beauty come and stay. Teach us your will and guide our way. Rejoice! Rejoice, Emmanuel, shall come to you, O Israel. O come, O come, O Lord of might, as to your tribes on Sinai's height. In ancient times you gave the law, in cloud and majesty and awe. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel, shall come to you, O Israel. O come, O branch of Jesse, free, your own from Satan's tyranny. From depths of hell your people save, and give them victory o'er the grave. Last chance sing, rejoice! Rejoice, Emmanuel, shall come to you, O Israel. 
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We're going to continue with our prayer of the day. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. With your abundant grace and might, free us from the sin that would obstruct your mercy, that willingly we may bear your redeeming love to all the world. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is from 2 Samuel, the 7th chapter. Now when the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to King David, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan. Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Are you the one to build me a house to live in? <laughs> I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day. But I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Where, wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep to be prince over my people Israel, and I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you, and I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them so that they may live in their own place, and be disturbed no more. And evildoers shall inflict them no more. As formerly, as formerly, from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel. And I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I find that really comforting, don't you? Since we can't be in our house that we built for God, that God says, don't need a house. I'm building you a house. You are my house. You are my tabernacle, my tent. And today, guess what? We're going to hear about the real tent, Mary, who is the real tabernacle of the Son of God. She's about to come up here in our gospel lesson. I find that really powerful, don't you? All right, let's move on to our psalm which is Mary's song. It's from Luke chapter 1, 46b through 55. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For you, Lord, have looked with favor on your lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed, you, the Almighty, have done great things for me, and holy is your name. You have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. You have shown strength with your arm and scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. You have filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. You have come to the aid of your servant Israel to remember the promise of mercy, the promise made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children forever. I'll tell you that, Mary, she knows how to write a song. <laughs> we're gonna sing it. Um, all right, we're gonna continue on with our second lesson from the letter to Rome. This is Romans 16 verses 25 to 27. Now to God who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, 
according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but is now disclosed, and through the prophetic writings is made known to all the Gentiles, according to the command of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of faith. To the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, now it's time to light our Advent wreath. If you have an Advent wreath and you'd like to light yours at home, you can do that with me now. We're on the fourth Sunday. Last Sunday we lit the candle of joy. This Sunday you can see baby Jesus with Mary and Joseph. And I have a Christ candle that's kind of hidden in there <laughs> for um, Christmas Eve. But I'm hoping that you'll get to see the lights from church for Christmas Eve. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe. You call all nations to walk in your light. And to seek your ways of justice and peace. For the night is past, and the dawn of your coming is near. Blessed be God forever. Amen. Light for candles to watch for Messiah. Let the light banish darkness. He is coming. Tell the glad tidings. Let your lights be shining. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But Mary was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor, David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. <laughs> then Mary said to her, said, Here I am, here am I, <laughs> the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Ooh, good stuff, I'd say. I don't know, are you guys doing daily devotions at home? I've got this really beautiful devotional booklet that I've been using um, as I've been lighting my candle, reading the stories to Elizabeth and and just kind of enjoying the the lights in the darkness 
and having a wonderful Advent season despite all of the stuff that could get you down. Um, there are plenty of different devotionals that can be used for these seasons. Next one coming up will be Lent, so that's a longer one. And you can get a devotional book for that. And there are even ones that are for non-holidays um, that many of us use for just everyday study. This one that I'm using um, is from Creative Communications, Prepare Ye by Reed Lessing. And one of the stories this past week just kind of hit me perfectly for today's sermon. And I thought I would share this story with you from that day. There were three men at a hospital waiting for their wives to have babies. A nurse said to the first man, congratulations, you're a father of twins. And he exclaimed, well, how appropriate. I'm the shortstop for the Minnesota twins. A few minutes later, the nurse said to the second man, congratulations, you're the father of triplets. And he exclaimed, well, how appropriate. I work for 3M. At that, the third man ran out of the hospital. <laughs> Why are you leaving? asked the nurse. He exclaimed, I don't like the way things are going. I work for 7-Up. <laughs> now that would be a miraculous birth, don't you think? <laughs> I don't know if I could handle seven babies. <laughs> Mary was given a promise of a miraculous birth. A child who would be called Son of God who would inherit the throne of David. And as she was told that she herself is favored by God, there was some big promise going on here that day. But this is a perplexing word from the angel. And Mary starts to wonder what it might mean. Now, I have never been pregnant myself. I've never felt the rush of wonder at the thought of carrying a child, nor have I sat there in fear of what childbearing might be like giving birth and what it does to your body. But I have met many women who have had the joy of becoming mothers. And more tragically, actually, I have met mothers, that's a big part of my job, who have actually lived longer than their children and this is a very delicate and painful place to be. I think it's actually a bitter pill to swallow and it feels against nature for a parent to outlive their child. It, should, it just shouldn't be. Those of us who've read the Gospel of John know that Mary was present at the time of her son's execution, his crucifixion, his death. How can it be that she is favored by God if she has to outlive her firstborn son? I would guarantee you those parents who have lost a child on that day wished that they could die with their kid. To witness Jesus' crushing death doesn't feel like being a favored parent. Like, shouldn't you watch your child become the king like, and get to go to the parties? And What exactly is this? message from the angel. Well, one of my favorite theologians is a professor at Luther Seminary. I did not go to Luther Seminary, but they produce incredible study materials for us pastors. Dr. Caroline Lewis, she said this week that Mary lived in the time between how can this be since I'm a virgin and for nothing will be impossible with God. Despite the crushing death of her son, one of the most incredible outcomes of his miraculous birth is the moment of God's movement over all of creation, over her body, that God would become human, Emmanuel, God with us, to live, to create, to heal, to breathe, to die and ultimately to crush the powers of death totally. His passage through our world 
meant that what was now is no more. That means that our questions, all of them, leave us wondering, well, how can this be? Are simply, ha ha ha, <laughs> answered with, well, for nothing is impossible with God. And yet, we get to live in that same space, just as Mary did, between those statements. How can this be? How can this be? Well, nothing's impossible for God or with God. For us, God can do anything. We've been called beloved and favored ones by God. I think that it was a bird that hit my air conditioner. Hope they're okay. Anyway, we have been called beloved and favored ones. We are also marked by the very cross where Mary stood and wept. We have been marked by that cross. But like she found out, her son's kingdom does not end there in that moment at his death. His life, his death, and ultimately his resurrection provides Mary and us with hope the hope that we need to continue to live in a world where everything just seems impossible. <sighs> where everything feels crazy. Where things are pretty frightening. And especially right now where things are all upside down. You know by now, if you know me, <clears throat> that what I thought was impossible, that I would never become a mother was a miracle for me too. Though my daughter Elizabeth had a mom who loved her, and she still does, I'm sure, and parents, her, mother, her birth mother's parents, um, who grieved a terrible loss, it would be 11 years ago, this past uh, four days ago, December 16th, that Sharice died. Something that felt impossible for me became a treasure, a blessing, and a joy. And Charisse's family, Elizabeth's, birth, Elizabeth's mother's grandparents and aunt, and everyone else in that clan <laughs> that we call the outlaws, because outlaws are wanted, those folks have welcomed me and given me a place in their home, in their family, in their hearts. And Elizabeth's birth, was miraculous. It brought me and the rest of our family tremendous hope. So the birth of a child, even with tragedy around it, even with anxiety around it, even with the troubles that come, even with the death of your child, all of that wrapped up in it cannot outweigh the incredible gift of the birth of that one. The one, how can this be? With God, all things are possible. God promised to be with Mary, to sustain her, to draw so close to her that she would actually carry God in her own body. God promises to be inside of us too, in our hearts, in our minds, as we're thinking, as we're being inspired and dreaming. God is in our walk, in our life with others. God is in the end of our lives, promising to draw us home when the time comes and into the next life where we can be reunited with those who've gone before us. So we can say with Mary, here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. And we can trust that God will go with us through it all. That we don't need a tent or a building or anything <laughs> special in a, to meet God there. For God says, when did I ever ask for a house of cedar? I want you. I want to reside in and near and with you because I love you. You're my beloved one. I want to just be close. I want to be where you are. All the miraculous stuff in between that, how can that be that God would want to be with me? And with God, all things are possible. This is a powerful message, I think, on this fourth Sunday in Advent. 
as we enter into a very interesting new year of hope for 2021. There's lots to be excited about with being a, in a relationship with God. Our hymn for the day. How about we sing that for this morning? It is, My Soul Proclaims Your Greatness. This is the, um, the song that Mary wrote. Not the tune, <laughs> but the words. My soul proclaims your greatness, Lord. I sing my Savior's praise. You looked upon my lowliness, and I am full of grace. Now every land and every age this blessing shall proclaim. Great wonders you have done for me, and holy is your name. To all who live in holy fear, your mercy ever flows. With mighty arm you dash the proud, their scheming hearts expose. The ruthless you have cast aside, the lowly throned instead. The hungry filled with all good things, the rich sent off unfed. To Israel your servant blessed, your help is ever sure. The promise to our parents made, their children will secure. Sing glory to the Holy One, give honor to the Word, and praise the power of the Most High, one God by all adored. Our worship continues with our confession of faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, he descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So as we're entering into our time of prayer, now would be a good time to put your um, prayer requests into messages. I see that Jim has sent me a message. Jan and Tim's friend. There we go. Jan and Tim's friend, Cindy, who has been diagnosed with cancer. I also have another friend who has let me know that she had an emergency colostomy on Friday and that she has stage four cancer. So we're gonna ask that you would pray for my friend. I see your Aunt Mary and Susan. Thanks, Jim. I got it.
if more come we'll um, have them there in the um, messages and um, we'll include them as we pray throughout the week okay Oh, Mary, she would like us to thank God for the vaccines. Absolutely, Mary. I'm with you on that one. That's an incredible gift. Let's pray that it stops this thing in its tracks. All right. God of power and might, comfort your people and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. Gracious God, all generations call you blessed. In this holy season, we pray for our neighbors of other denominations and faiths. And you can name the mosques, temples, churches, and synagogues near where you live. And thank God for the lives of those folks of faith there. Inspire the faith of their people. Cultivate understanding among us and strengthen us in love and service in our community. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Creator God, you scatter the proud. Everything we have belongs first to you. Bless and protect the seas, the mountains, the plains, the forests, the skies, the soils, anything else you want, the birds and the animals that are around us, all of our pets, oh God, we give you thanks. Give us humility as we tend them. Hear us, oh God, your mercy is great. Righteous God, you humble the powerful and lift up the lowly. We pray for the leaders of all nations that they amplify the voices of people in need. Guide all people entrusted with leadership to create societies in which everyone can flourish. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Compassionate God, you fill the hungry with good things and send the rich away empty. Nourish those who lack access to adequate food and nutrition. Bless the work of advocates, community organizers, and food pantries. Encourage others to provide for their neighbors in need. Do you have anyone that you are praying for today that is in desperate need for housing or food? God, we lift up these people. We ask that you open our eyes, that we may see and know and act, that we might have the bravery and the courage and the generosity to share what we have with others. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Healing God, you pour out mercy to all who cry out to you. Surround everyone in need of healing in body, mind, or spirit with your tender presence. Today we pray especially for Ken Dapp, Heather Yoder, Anita, Painter, Pastor Sharon, Maggie Fogelman, Bailey and Carter, Trevor, Kristen Klingeman, Pat Hefner, Jan Barrick, Carla Ziegler, Doris Savage, Aunt Susan, oh, excuse me, Susan, Aunt Marion, Cindy, who's been diagnosed with cancer. And I want to give you thanks, God, as Bruce put in the messages, to give you thanks for the healing of my body. And I see there's another message. Okay. We also want to give you thanks, Lord God, as Mary reminded us, for the gift of vaccines, for the gift of hope, for all those who are working on the front lines or in the background to, uh, to make um, all those who are ill well. We pray for those families who are grieving at the loss of their loved ones and the inability to be together as they die. 
Oh God, we ask that you would encourage us through this difficult time. I'm going to give you a moment to say silently or out loud all the names of those that you would like to pray for this morning. For the Parthamores, Lord, thank you. For all the members of the church who remind me of your love. For this time of worship, Lord God, we praise you for Mary who said, yes, let it be to be your servants, Lord. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Eternal God, you are faithful to the promises you made to our forebears. We give thanks for the ministry of Katerina von Bora. Oh, excuse me, her last name was Luther. She's married to Dr. Martin. <laughs> and other ancestors who organized, planned, dreamed, encouraged, and reached out as they served you. We give you thanks for the bold leadership of female leaders in our own time. I think there are plenty of them to give thanks for, especially Miss Mary who said yes to being the mother of Jesus. Inspire others with their steadfast witness. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always and also with you. Share the peace or hug on yourself <laughs> with one another. Share the peace here. I'll give you a minute to start greeting one another here as I say thank you to all of you who have sent out Christmas cards to one another or made phone calls to check on each other. Um, and those that have checked in on me and sent uh, cards and, um, and, and, and or gifts too. <laughs> I want to just say thank you so much for your generosity towards one another and towards me. You guys are amazing people and I can't thank you enough. All right. I'm going to read this little bit here that that Jim includes in our bulletins for us. For nothing will be impossible with God. Luke 1 37. This Sunday we celebrate Mary's faithfulness and willingness to do God's will. This brave young woman hears the angel's words and believes. As a faithful steward, what possibilities do you see for your community and the congregation where you worship? What possibilities do you see? If you've got some, sure do take a minute and let us know. I'd like to know what ideas you have, ways in which, what possible what possibilities God has in store for your community where you worship. Well, we're winding down our worship here. We're down to the last couple things. We've got the Lord's Prayer and a hymn, and then I'm going to play a little bit of um, music. But again, I just want to say thank you all for being here with me. And, um, and also thank you for your financial gifts to church and to feeding ministries, etc. Wherever you're using your gifts of finance to make a difference. It's making a difference in our congregation. I want to say thank you. And in our ministries of uh, missions, God's blessing us. And I want to give thanks to God for our bishop who has led us, led us so well um, over the past few months, encouraging us pastors to be careful and take care of, good care of ourselves. I want to say thanks to my hubby, Tom, and everybody else. I guess I'm full of gratitude today an attitude of gratitude right <laughs> one to carry all right let us continue now um, as we end our liturgy with the lord's prayer our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. A blessing for you. The creator of the stars, bless your advent waiting. The long expected savior, fill you with love. The unexpected spirit, guide your journey now and forever. Amen. That's a really beautiful blessing. This is a song called All Earth is Hopeful, and it's ELW266. It's kind of new to me. I love that um, Karen keeps giving us these really beautiful tunes, and, and some of them are just plumb new to me. I don't know why. <laughs> so if I mess up, you can give me a little bit of grace, right? And sing it anyway the right way. <laughs> so let's give it a shot together. All earth is hopeful, the Savior comes at last. Furrows lie open for God's, God's creative task. This is this the labor of people who, who struggle to see how God's truth and justice set everybody free free people of israel you heard the prophet tell a virgin's mother will bear emmanuel she conceived him god with us our brother whose birth restores hope and courage to children of this earth. Mountains and valleys will have to be pre prepared. New highways opened, new protocols declared. Almost here, God, God is nearing in beauty and grace. All clear every gateway in haste come out in haste we first saw jesus a baby in the crib this same lord jesus today has come to live in our world he is present in neighbors we see our jesus is with us and ever sets us free. I'm going to play you a recording here <laughs> after the dismissal of the real way to sing it by a choir, okay? <laughs> so don't go get to listen to hearing that, that proper version of it, okay? Go in peace, my beloved friends. Prepare the way of the Lord. God is, thanks be to God, we will. All right, let me see if I can find this recording so you can hear it for real. <laughs>
beautiful. Peace be with you, my friends. Love you.